Hello everyone, welcome to Common Sense Academy. I'm your host, Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. Today we're gonna do a little bit of sovereign citizen stories. I'm gonna give you an update on a story that I covered uh, about a week ago on a Florida YouTube auditor named Ian McGuire who was facing several criminal charges um, related to a whole bunch of activity that I will recap for you in a moment. So we're going to go over an update on him. When I reported the story, some of this had already been resolved, um, but I'm going to give you the latest up to date on what's going on with Ian McGuire. Then I'm going to we're going to read a story sent to me um, from one of my viewers who was a uh, military police, a security officer on uh, down at Fort Bragg when he encountered a sovereign citizen outside of Fort Bragg. It's sort of a funny story, and we will get into that as well. Um, if you like my show, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. It's a free way to support this show. Remember, I haven't said this in a while, this show will always remain free. However, I'd like to get to 10,000 subscribers. It allows uh, me to do extra things in YouTube. It gives me a merchandise shelf. Most of my viewers are not subscribed, so go ahead, subscribe for me. Also, comment, like, and share. It's a free way to support the show, especially sharing as well, because it gets my my videos out there. Also, sign up for my email list description, is, or I'm sorry, the link is in the description below. You'll get a free PDF on the history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement written by yours truly, Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer, Common Sense Academy. Okay, so as you can see in this screenshot behind me, we have a picture of Ian McGuire, who was a YouTuber's auditor cop watcher type down in Florida. He had his own YouTube channel called Hate the State, and uh, he was going out, I, I, if I recall correctly, um, a lot of his legal trouble stemmed from the fact that there was a crime that was committed on his street and he went out on the, on the street and started to record the crime and he got into it with, I, I'm not sure about the police, but with some of the witnesses in the crime. After that, he made some videos mocking the witness and then there's even allegations of him doing some stalking. A restraining order was imposed against him in regards to one or two people. I believe one of these persons Persons lived in another state and the police are alleging that he violated these restraining orders. They got a warrant, went to his house, recovered uh, a whole, some drugs and some guns, all right, and a whole bunch of ammunition. So the last time we talked about it, um, I believe he had turned down a plea deal, okay? He had taken a plea deal and then he turned down a plea deal on some other charges. Now, he was uh, he's lives in Florida, and these charges stem from Florida. So he's going to have some state court charges and then some federal charges as well. It appears to me what happened is after they searched his house, he was arrested. He's been detained. I believe he's still detained in jail. Okay, they found drugs in the house, marijuana and drug paraphernalia. And he was charged in state court with possession of the marijuana and possession of paraphernalia. So it's two cases. Might have been one case, but we'll call it two for our purposes. All right. One marijuana, one dr drug paraphernalia. Um, he was also charged with uh, stalking and witness tampering in state court. That's two more cases. And additionally, he faced two charges of contempt of court. The contempt of court charges arose from the fact that the police alleged that he violated the restraining order. So like I said before, there was this restraining order against him, against these witnesses, I believe, don't quote me exactly on that, you can read the story, it'll be in my description, but he had this restraining order and allegedly he stalked these witnesses, these individuals who had the restraining order against, he attempted to contact them. On top of that, he had weapons in his house. Um, it's not illegal to have weapons in your house. However, many restraining orders, including in Pennsylvania where I practice, will require you to surrender your firearms until the restraining order is up. Now you ask me, don't isn't there a Second Amendment right to bear arms? There is a Second Amendment right to bear arms. Um, 
actually, and if you watch the little video, which um, I will, uh, I, I may connect you to here. You can just look it up. Ian McGuire, Hate the State. It's under Hate the State Audits. Um, they, they get, it goes into a little bit more detail, but his attorney, I'm going to cover most of it, but you can look it up. His attorney argued that he couldn't be prosecuted for violation of the restraining order because of the guns, because of his Second Amendment right to bear arms. Uh, apparently, this attorney um, went and made a whole bunch of Second Amendment arguments, and the court still ended up finding against him. Um, if you watch my other channel, Joe the Lawyer, I go into the Second Amendment a lot, a lot more, but the Second Amendment is not an absolute right. The government is allowed to place reasonable restrictions on firearm possession, and one that has been held to be constitutional over and over again is if someone is, is, is the subject of a protection from abuse or restraining order, it is constitutional for the government to require that person to surrender their weapons. They made a constitutional argument at this hearing. Perhaps they will appeal, but he lost. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself by telling you what happened. Okay, so so we got two drug-related charges, a stalking and a witness tampering charge, and then two charges contempt of court, one for the contact, one for the weapons for violating the restraining order. In addition, uh, Mr. McGuire is facing a, a federal indictment. He's federally indicted for facilities of interstate commerce. So we're going to we're going to jump into and take a look at that law. It's an interesting law that I just learned a little bit about uh and I believe he could be facing a very significant amount of jail or, or prison time if he's convicted of that in in sentencing in federal court is pretty tough. Oh, that reminds me. Boy, I'm off today. It's a little bit late. We didn't do the same time sip. So before I tell you what happened with all of his cases, everyone Raise your cup in the air. Today I'm cheating a little bit. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's a Pepsi. That's the Pepsi symbol. I bought Pepsi Zero, uh, which isn't too bad. So raise your cup in the air, whether you're drinking wine, Pepsi, Coke, water. Um, the coronavirus is out there, so um, you're probably at home getting drunk. Maybe you don't have to work tomorrow. Uh, maybe uh, you do have to work, but you're getting drunk anyway because this could be our last day on earth. Um, I got to poke a little bit of fun. The coronavirus is serious. Okay, but let's have some fun too. All right, everybody, uh, it tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Now you can see the Pepsi a little clearer. Delicious. Okay, so what happened to all of this guy's all this guy's charges. And the reason I covered him is because he's this cop watcher auditor type, which is the subject of my channel. Generally, Common Sense Academy, we look at sovereign citizens, auditors, and other strange types. Um, so the two drug-related charges he took a plea deal on. He pled guilty to those. It was possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia. He got six months credit for his time in jail. He got time served. So his sentence for that would have been done because he had been sitting in jail all this time. So he got credit for the time served on those. Those cases are resolved. As far as the stalking and the witness tampering, the state of Florida, the prosecutor, no prost those cases. No prosecute, no prosecute. It's Latin, nullification of prosecution. That's what it means when prosecutors basically just let a case go, okay? It's called a no prost. There's a special form. They no process cases. They let the stalking case and the witness tampering go. And the prosecutor said that because that conduct was covered under the federal charges. Then he had the contempt charges, which related to him violating the restraining order by contacting the, the protected individuals and by having guns and ammunition. He argued at his trial on the basis of the Second Amendment that he couldn't be prosecuted for the uh, gun charges. However, the judge disagreed, disagreed. Like I said, it's been held constitutional in the past. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're probably not going to win on that even if they... Uh, appeal it and he was found guilty of both of those now i couldn't find on the internet um i believe he was found guilty uh february 5th of 2020 but i couldn't find on the internet what he was um sentenced to 
okay? So all of his cases are resolved. He'd still be pending his sentence on those two cases. What that means when you've been found guilty, but you haven't been sentenced in Pennsylvania, that means your case has been adjudicated, but you still need to await sentencing, which means he's likely still being held on a high bond or a denial of bond until at the very least he can be sentenced. Because after someone's been found guilty, the risk of them fleeing. So, you know, a court may set a higher bond or deny bond because that individual has just been found guilty. Now they know they're going to prison or jail jail, they just don't know for how long. So that would make you want to flee, right? Um, so I imagine he's still being held in jail. Plus he's got this federal case. Uh, he'll still get credit for this time that he's doing. Um, but, uh, you know, he hasn't been sentenced on those cases yet. Uh, he was going to take a plea deal on this case. Then he withdrew it. Then he went to trial and he lost. Now, he's still facing a federal case. This is the big kahuna, the whopper, the big daddy. What he is charged with on his federal case is this right here, 18 U.S. Code 1958. I, I believe this is correct. I'm not 100% sure. Again, the news often gets legal stuff wrong, okay? The news gets it wrong all the time. Um, all the news reported is that he was charged with use of interstate commerce facilities, all right? And there's, um, I think there's one other U.S. code that uses similar language. So I'm, I'm speculating a bit here, but I believe this is what he's charged with, okay? Use of interstate commerce facilities in the commission of murder for hire. Pretty wild, huh? But when you read the statute, you'll see here, whoever travels in or causes another to travel in interstate or foreign commerce or causes another to use the mail or any facility of interstate or foreign commerce with that with intent that a murder be committed or as consideration for a prom, promise or agreement to pay anything of pecuniary value or who conspires to do so shall be fined under this title in prison not more than uh, 10 years or both, and if personal injury results shall be fined under this title or imprisoned for not more than 20 years or both, and if death results shall be punishable by death or life imprisonment, shall be fined not more than $250,000. So he's facing a really stiff penalty here. I'm not sure if it was attempted murder, but from the news article, it believes that they're arguing, you know, the indictment states under this law that he used the facilities of interstate commerce, uh, either mail, electronic mail, and a website to cause emotional distress and put a victim in fear of serious bodily injury. So it may be the attempt form of this crime, right? He just made an attempt to hurt or uh, injure someone or possibly even murder them. I believe it's under this statute, but I could be wrong wrong. Um, however, it's likely uh, who conspire shall be fined under this title or imprisoned for not more than 10 years and shall be fined uh, or if personal injury results not more than 20 years. So, and my understanding is no personal injury resulted. So he's likely, likely looking at this 10 year sentence here if this is the correct statute and I can tell you if he's convicted in federal court, he will probably do at least the very, you know, he, 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 very good chance he does all 10 of those years. Um, if that is what, how he is sentenced, the judge could give him less than the 10 years. So we'll follow that story. I just wanted to give everybody an update because I'd talked about in the past, you know, this guy, um, what really annoyed me about his story. If you watch my prior video, when he was harassing these witnesses, he was, first of all, he was making YouTube videos about them, making fun of them. And then he mailed a dead cat, you know, and everybody in the comments was like, maybe he didn't kill the cat. I don't know. Maybe he didn't kill the cat. But um, I kind of think if you mail a dead cat, you probably killed the cat. That really pisses me off. Don't be killing animals, man. I mean, that's how we got the Wuhan coronavirus. You know what I'm saying? That came out of some... You guys, anybody watch that video of the freaking wild, uh, the, the, the wild animal market in Wuhan? Woo! Woo! I'm they, I'm sorry. Those those are wild. Those that those those markets are crazy, man. Okay, so that's the update on uh, 
on um, Ian McGuire, looks like he's facing considerable time. On his other cases, he took a plea on one, went to trial and lost on the other, um, and now he's facing a buttload of time on this interstate commerce facilities charge. And just so you know why it's, doesn't that sound weird, interstate commerce facilities charge? Well, that's because the federal, uh, the FBI usually is not going to be able to get involved in a case unless the case, in, you know, crossed state lines or used some sort of interstate commerce. That's actually for constitutional reasons, the Commerce Clause, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, there is, you can argue that any type of commerce, anything is, is uh, affects interstate commerce, okay, but the crime more or less has to affect interstate commerce for the feds to get involved. That's why you see the feds prosecute a whole bunch of um, drug dealing cases, especially like these networks that run across entire states. It's because it affects multiple states. And that mean that gives the federal um, federal prosecutors and the FBI jurisdiction over. Oh, and sorry for this strange little interruption. Uh, I had a little mishap in the editing process. So now we're gonna take a look at an email that was sent to me by one of our viewers telling a story about a sovereign citizen encounter that he, uh, he had as an MP at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Here's what he says. Meeting a sovereign citizen idiot is something I never thought I would encounter on Fort Bragg. I was working a night shift with a fellow MP. While we drove through our area, we received a call that an alarm had been triggered at a military unit headquarters building. That's pretty serious, the headquarters building. They typically had their arms rooms readily available but locked up. So first thought is someone trying to break into the offices or the arms room supply areas. Heading over code three, both me and my partner chambered rounds in our sidearms before searching around the building. We found no one had gotten in the building. There was no official breach. Calling another patrol, we searched the area, finding a person walking along the side of the road. It's well after dark, so no one should be out there. Stopping and calling it in that it might be the person who set off the alarm. We approached with caution, identifying ourselves and had backup on the way. The guy stopped and of course, of course, the sovereign citizen calmly informed us he was traveling on base. <laughs> He would, he would. We asked for his ID and reason he, he was on base, met with a claim he had no ID, and if he did, he was under no jurisdiction to pass it to us as we had no authority over him. Sir, let me tell you, this gentleman has all the authority that he needs, especially more authority being on a military base, okay? Um, and, you know, the authority of the barrel of a gun is authority, let me tell you. My partner, having more road experience than I did, took the lead in informing him we were under arms as enforcement of all policies and laws while on Fort Bragg and we needed his ID. We were met with a name but no date of birth, no location of record stating we were not in any way able to enforce any policy and law on him as we were military and he was a sovereign of the United States. Yes, yes, I love it. The man kept trying to reach towards his jacket pockets, prompting both of us to draw our sidearms and order his hands to be raised so we could detain him. He lifted his hands claiming as a sovereign citizen he had the authority to be anywhere on the base. Yeah, they have the authority to be anywhere in the world and do whatever they want. He was probably reaching in his pocket to pull out his uh, common law handbook. We asked him if he was the one trying to enter the building down the road. His response was he had tried to enter as the armed forces were a federal entity that serves the nation. Therefore, they cannot conceal or restrict any citizen from inspecting their buildings, paperwork, equipment, and if deemed unnecessary, could be taken by the citizenry. So this sounds like a sovereign citizen who was attempting to audit the military. There you go. Not only is he a sovereign citizen, uh, he's the Secretary of Defense. This concept is utterly insane. He had violated Bragg policy by trespassing, attempting to break into a building. The entire time he was in the patrol car, he was screaming that as a sovereign citizen, oh, oh I, I gotta move, I gotta move.
The entire time he was handcuffed in our patrol car, screaming as a sovereign citizen, he did not consent to us detaining him while he was lawfully traveling and any other nonsensical excuse. We dropped him off in detainment and dry out cell for observation and formal charges. It wouldn't surprise me if he was drunk too. Uh, he almost got himself shot. Oftentimes that takes alcohol, but we know for these sovereign citizens that it doesn't. Once paperwork was fill, filled out, Bragg barred him from entry and turned him over to Fayetteville, North Carolina police to be transported off the base. I never heard anything more if he attempted to enter or anything. Had he tried through, the civilian guards would bar him without ID unless able to sneak onto the base, then it would be felony trespass on a base. Boy, I mean, these sovereigns are idiots, but doing this on a military base, you are really, really dumb. I mean, you're even dumber than when you're doing it out with the regular police because the likelihood of you getting shot, I believe, goes up. And a lot of um, the military police are armed with um with uh with rifles and more powerful weapons than the regular police would be let me take a sip real quick <sighs> he was probably drunk i wonder how he got on the base probably got on the base legally somehow uh it can be pretty tough to get on military bases um I'll have to remind me, somebody have to remind me to tell a story of that another time. When I was in Japan, I worked as a security forces augmentee and I used to work the gate to the base. And uh, I can tell you, it was pretty, it was, we didn't, I never encountered anything violent or crazy. It was mostly drunk people um, trying to get on the base or trying to sneak their girlfriends in. Okay, I'll tell you real quick. A lot of that, a lot of, you know, so my base was mostly Air Force, a little bit of Marines, but the airmen, that's what you call in the Air Force, the airmen of the Marines uh, would put, would put girls, mostly native Okinawan, Japanese girls, whatever would put them in the trunk and and try to drive them through the base i i it, it happened it happened okay just just too hilarious too hilarious okay everybody i hope you enjoyed this episode of the common sense academy a little long and a little strange in the format but i think we learned something with the ian mcguire case and we got to hear a good story from one of my great fans um, he goes by Ken, the name Kenji Stargazer. Stargazer, thank you very much for presenting me with this story to read to my viewers. Um, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Watch me during this coronavirus outbreak. You don't have much else to do. And make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000. Common Sense Academy out.